In today's lesson, we're going to talk about um, another aspect of um, church ministry. Talk about that. Uh, a new, a different aspect of, of church ministry, and that's uh, making changes. Um, you know, sometimes as a leader, um, either we get gung ho about something, or we come into a new position, like let's say um, a, a new pastoring position that you've never been in before. Um, or sometimes, you know, you go to a seminar or something like that, and, and you get all fired up and you start seeing things that need to change. You start seeing things that are inefficient. You start seeing things that, that, that chase people away um, and just cause kind of stagnancy in the church um, or in whatever ministry you are. And, and the, the natural urge is to do something like this, um, change everything all at once, you know, with no concern for, for the people, just for the efficiency. Well, I'm doing it for the people, but if you're doing it for the people, you have to realize that, you know, those people, even those people who are stuck on their tradition, um, they're still, you still need to look out for them too. See, we can't come in like a hurricane and just blow everything away. We've got to be tactful with this. So let's talk about making changes. Um, and, I, and I'm sure we've all been in that ministry, you know, where, where, <laughs> You know, we, we, we look at it and we see, you know, this is criminally inefficient. Um, I can fix this. You know, this is just terrible and I can fix it. Um, and so we just hop we just hop to it and try to change it in, in, uh, instantly. Um, some of the reasons why we try to make changes, um, which gets us, into, gets us into all kinds of trouble, is we see something that's inefficient, um, especially in ministry, um, well, this just is not very efficient. You know, it's wasting time, it's wasting resources, or something that's awkward. Like, I'm sure you've been in one of those old-timey churches where you walk in and they make you stand up in front of everybody. That's awkward. Um, or when they make you stand up and sing happy birthday to you, that's awkward. Um, or, um, oh my goodness, so many different things that I've, that I've seen in my life that were so awkward. Um, you know, just, uh, I, I mean, I'm sure if you think back, you can remember something that was awkward for you. You know, and most people, especially newcomers to a church, don't want to be the center of attention. They just kind of want to get a feel for things, you know, be not be left alone. You know, they want to feel welcome, but they don't want to be hassled. You know, they just, just let me get in, kind of test the waters. You know, they don't want to see you in Walmart later and be like, oh, no, it's them. Um or, I mean, here's another one, the music. So many times we have awkward music in, in churches. And I'm not just talking about the old-time country churches, you know, that have, you know, the terrible sound and, and the people who can't sing worth anything. I'm not just talking about those people. I'm talking about in those big mega churches too, where they, where they make worship awkward. You know, they, they throw in the, the fog lights and, and the lights show and everything. And it's almost like you're having a seizure. There's so much stuff going on. And it just makes it very awkward to be intimate with the Lord. Because the people on the stage aren't being intimate with the Lord. You know, there's nobody really being intimate with each other. There, there's nothing going on. You know, and so you just kind of feel awkward and withdrawn. And you kind of get this idea that it's all about um, entertainment. You know, um... So awkward things in the churches, you know, just, but then also sometimes we see something just obsolete. I, I mean, it, it may have been efficient 100 years ago, but I mean, that was 100 years ago. You know, like, um, oh boy, um, carpet, let, let's talk about that, you know. Wow, th this carpet is really outdated, or, or, or sometimes, um, not the paint on the walls, but oh, brain fart. Uh, the, the stuff that they put over the walls in like the, the, the 70s and stuff, I... Ah, anyways, um, or sometimes pews or, or, or a piano or organs, and we see these things that, that just, well, that's maybe not for today's audience, you know, and so we try to change things and not good. You know, they, they say that, that a, a, a pastor doesn't really start to make an impact until he's been there for over seven years. Okay, you also have to realize that whatever's gone on before you will carry, o carry over into your uh, leadership. If the pastor before you was, you know, kind of an impatient person, you're probably going to have impatient people in your in your congregation because people mirror the tone that the leader sets. If you want your congregation to be loving and encouraging, you need to be loving and encouraging past, loving and encouraging past 
their mistakes. And let me tell you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm currently in a dispute with the uh, Secretary of State office, and let me tell you, I am ashamed of how I've acted. I'm very impatient, you know, and, and it, it, the thing is, if somebody would have seen the, 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 the way that I've been talking and the things that I've been seeing, it would have, it would have been embarrassing, you know what I mean? And that's kind of what I'm talking about, that we hold these attitudes in our hearts, you know, or, or we, we're we embittered towards the Lord about our current situation, so we kind of take it out in maybe hidden ways. That's st the the people in the in the congregation will still pick up on that. You know, people aren't aren't stupid. They're they're, they're going to know. They're going to know when you don't like them. They're going to know when there's something at war in your heart. You know, but anyways, um, and so think about that. Seven years before a pastor starts to starts to really make an impact, that's quite substantial. You know, I see pastors staying way too long where it makes transition very difficult, and I see pastors staying not long enough. Um, just remember, there is, there is, you don't have to stay too long or too little. You stay there, I mean, till, till the job is done. Um, yeah. Um, when you make changes, make sure to do it slow and steady. Um, you know, sometimes we try to go and just Fix everything all at once. There's we there's kind of like a little process that you do. You mention a change, let it kind of settle in for a while. You mention it again, let it settle in for a while. And you know there'll be people who will say something along the lines of this: oh, we're, we're, "We are ready for that change. We're totally support you 100 percent until the change actually comes." And then a lot of times they're not so much behind you. And then there's other people who won't like what you're doing but they'll keep quiet and there's other people who won't like what, what you're doing and they'll make it very vocal and they'll get other people on their sides and they'll make it a thing of gossip okay now i say this to encourage you to to do the changes that you do slow and steady okay yes a lot of times they do need to be changed that's a, a, something that does need to happen but then other times n not so much sometimes it's just our personal preference you know um well, I don't like the, the, the style of the music that our musicians do. Well, once again, with churches, I mean, this isn't a business. You know, I, I've heard it said before, and I'll say it again, and I'll, I'll say it. Um, the church is a hospital for the hurting, not a country club for the saints. We're not going to have everything the way we like. You know, um, at the end of the day, you have to decide, do you want numbers or do you want disciples? If you're only interested in numbers, by all means, do not do nothing but appease the crowd. But keep in mind that to appease the crowd, you you can't ever mention sin, you can't ever really mention uh, struggles, you can't ever because once again, struggles are inevitably tied with sin. Um, you can't ever mention the end times. You can't ever mi uh, mention being a missions-minded church because you have a church that's self-focused. Because they're not really a church, they're they're a group of people who, who get together on Sunday to do their duty. But if you want to make disciples, if you want to make disciples, you have to witness to everyone, not just the white uh, upper middle class. You have to go out to the slums and reach out to those people who actually need it. You don't need to go to those who already who are who are well. You need to go to those who are who need a doctor. You need to seek and to save that which was lost past your bias. Um, you know, and, and so you, you kind of have to figure out, you know, like with the music thing. Well, we would probably get more numbers this way. Well, let me tell you something. If you're getting people by music, they're probably not going to stay anyways. How you get people is in a relationship with Jesus Christ and in service to the community. When you love God and you love people, people know. Regardless of whether they agree with everything that you're doing, they will still hang around if God is moving. Unless they're not actually concerned and with the movement of the Holy Spirit. If they're not on board with God anyways, there's nothing you could do. You could uh, cater to them and let them sop up all your energy. But at the end of the day, you will you will be drained. Your church will be obsolete because they're just going to be simply an enter as something for entertainment. And the people wouldn't have changed anyways. See what I mean? You can't worry about... Um, being relevant over being purposeful. 
God has called you to a thing, and it's uh, keep keep your head, you know, keep your head focused, keep keep on goal, but do the changes that you have to do slow and steady, slow and steady. Okay, don't go and just start changing a bunch of things. Uh, mention it, mention it, mention it. Slowly start to change things, and then once you do, move it. But don't get like, for instance, if you if you have an old, outdated pulpit, move it. Then you know, move it to storage, and then sell it. Don't just up and sell it one day. You know, and, and mention it. You know, we're gonna get a new pulpit. This one's just a little bit too big, a little bit too much. Um, we're just gonna downsize pulpits or whatever. If you maybe you don't even want to use a pulpit, maybe it's just taking up stage space and you don't want it. Maybe you want to tear out the stage so that nobody's higher, everybody's on equal ground. That's that's cool too. But ma mention it before, and mention it, and mention it, and keep mentioning it. Make sure people are with you. And also, make sure that people are with you before you start making changes. Sometimes we try to make changes so that people will be with us. But it's, we have that backwards. You get people with you, and then you make the changes. Does that make sense? Um, if you're in leadership, you will eventually know what I'm talking about if you don't know what I'm talking about. And if you need any help, just I mean, post in the comments below, and I'll, and I'll get back. Um, but be slow and steady with any changes that you make. Always be slow and steady. If you go too fast, it will inevitably be um, hurt feelings or mutiny of some sort. Okay, um, And this is the perfect opportunity for the people who are power grabbers to rush in there. Oftentimes we take a church and we think that it has no problems. We're all awestruck and everything. And then the honeymoon ends. And you start seeing different things. Excuse me. You start seeing different things that you were kind of blinded to before. Um, and it's in these moments that those people who you thought were friends actually turn out to be people who only liked you if you left things exactly how they were. And if you let them have say-so in every decision. And if you let them have access to everything that they, everything in the offices. And if you let, see what I mean? And they start having all these attachments with their, with their faithfulness. Oh, I'm a support, I, I'm a supportive, loyal Christian. Are you though? Because a lot of times um, there'll be power plays like that. And if you make slow and steady changes, it helps to ward these off. I know one church who was in very strong danger of a power grab, but because they made it did things slow and steady, it, it turned out where it just resolved itself, and the pastor never had really had to do anything. I mean, there towards the end he had to do some stuff, but I mean, for the whole play of it, it could potentially have been disastrous and caused a huge church split, but because he acted slow and steady, it wasn't. So... Um, you know, you, you watch out for these things and, and, and remember you don't get support by yelling at people. James says that the anger of man doesn't produce the righteousness of God. I mean, that's just a principle in life. I mean, even as I, even as I think about what I've had to do with, with the state, you know, I've lost my temper, I've yelled at them, you know, I've sent, I said all kinds of mean things and, you know, at the end of it, I realized, you know, I was wrong. By all means, what they did was wrong, obviously. They, what they did was corrupt, yes. But my reaction really matters, and I reacted wrong. I said things in the wrong way, and I said the wrong thing, too. See what I mean? So, anyways, um, with mutinies, you know, those kinds of things sometimes happen. Sometimes there's nothing you can do, but sometimes simply acting with more tact will resolve the issue. Um... Um, also, spend more time praying than fighting. If you're spending most of your time justifying what you're doing, maybe you're moving a little bit too fast. Pray, 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 and pray. Pray and pray some more. If you want your congregation to pray, you've got to make prayer a number one priority. Um, I, I was talking to my worship team um, last Saturday, and I said, when you are dealing with someone who's irritating, prayer is how you go over their heads. And I'm not saying that in a contentious way. I'm at, I'm at a brick wall with this situation. What do I do? Pray. You pray. And as you pray, you are appealing to God himself. And God, although he doesn't act necessarily in the way that you want, will always guide. Guide through the things. No matter what's gone on in the past, he is faithful. He is faithful. If you just don't simply repent and turn to him, I mean, he'll, he'll always work these things out. Mm-hmm. Follow God's leading, not what's justified. Sometimes when we're making changes, oh, well, I'm justified in, in telling this person to just leave and never come back. Right, but is God leading you to do that, or is your conscience or your emotions leading you to do that? See, I mean, sometimes we... 
sometimes we justify doing very stupid things because we have the ability to, rather than saying, is that still, is that right for me to do that? Um, if you do have a mutiny or some kind of thing like that, hurt for them, not, it's not, it's not an us versus them, me against you, it's not like that. Maybe sometimes they keep trying to make it into something like that, but remember that Jesus loved Judas until the end. Until the very end. He knew it was going to happen the whole time, but he loved him until the end. So, I mean, uh, Jesus could have gotten rid of Judas a long time ago, but yet he stuck with him for three and a half years. Why? I mean, he was always given the opportunity to be saved. You know. And so if you have to make a church decision that doesn't hurt, you probably are wrong anyways, or you have the wrong attitude. Um, you have to hurt for those people who are hurt. Um, so, you know, when you're making these things, be slow and steady. Uh, test your footing before you leap into it. Never stop loving or ne or give up on them. Okay? Sometimes you reach a place, of, oh, they're just lost cause, or I'm just moving on past them, or, you know, well, they've really done it now. You can't ever reach this place as a minister. When you start picking and choosing who your audience is, you cease to be a minister and you start to be a judge. Ministers are all about serving and raising other people to serve. Okay. Um, sometimes, though, when people are opposing us, there will be an underlying issue. They're not. It's not even that they're at odds with us. They're just scared of the change. They are, you know... Um, Maybe there's a certain sentimental value. Maybe, you know, this old widow who's giving you such a problem, maybe her husband originally built the pews. See what I mean? Whatever the situation, sometimes we can just think that the people are just opposing us when there is sometimes a reason behind it, besides that they want power. Because a lot of times they'll just simply be power plays. Um, I misspelled that as lose people, not loose people. <laughs> um, you will lose people if you make changes too quickly. That's just a fact. And you don't want to ever get the idea of this. Oh, well, they're old and decrepit anyways. Uh, out with the old and with the new. Uh, we need to move in a different direction. You can retain the people you have while still increasing who you will get. That is a possibility. Um, so gradual guidance with patience. You gradually lead the people, you, you respond in patience, and realize that, you know, once again, the things that have gone on before may be a recurring factor. Maybe the last pastor ran off. Maybe the last pastor was only there for like six months. See what I mean? And they're not going to want someone who's only here for a few, a few minutes and then leaves. You know, oh, well, he changed everything and then left. See what I mean? Um, so sometimes people just want to know that you're you're in it for the long call before you start making changes. You know what I mean? Um, and I hope this is making sense. You know, basically what all the, the, this whole lesson give, comes down to is make changes slowly. And I'm not talking about over the period of a few hours, over the period of a few days, or, or a few weeks. I'm talking about over the period of a few months to years. Make changes slowly. And once again. Um, in church ministry, don't ever give up. Okay, well, actually, in life in general, don't give up. You know, um, think about the runner who, who's running uphill. Um, and it just seems like the hill just keeps on going forever and ever. And then finally, they get to the top of that hill. And it's all easy, smooth sailing for the rest of the, the, rest of the jog. Think of that. Okay, you don't know when the top of your hill is going to be. And you're going to be finally past this. Don't give up. Keep, keep seeking the Lord. Keep praying. Keep in your word. Don't get weighted down. Don't get weighted down. Just stay in prayer. Um, and get people on your board and whatnot who who will support you. You don't want people on your, on your board who are doing things behind your back, who are doing dishonest things, immoral things. You don't want those kinds of people on your board. Um, the people who are on your board need to be people who earned the place by their actions not by their wallet. You, there should never be a, a decision made in church based solely on this. I don't want to offend the person who, who brings in all that money. Your, your, your reasons for decision should be, I feel like this is God's direction for the church. Um, you know, and you should obviously, you know, have have a board that supports you and ask. And if they do support you, ask, ask their opinion. You know, do you think this is this is a good thing? You know, what do you think? 
um, rather than just making split decisions and, and, and just telling them to deal with it, you know? Um, but anyways, um, so I'll try to keep posting uh, church ministry um, videos as I, as I remember them. I hope that this has really made an impact. And remember, when you make changes, be slow and steady. Purposeful changes.